Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, another episode of Cafe Euro 2020. A little recap of what happened last night. We got to witness some amazing football. Spain beats Croatia 5-3, going into extra time and setting the world record for the highest scoring Euro game in Euro history. Or yes, Spain ki side kafi khatarnak dekhiya because in their last two appearances, they've scored a collective of 10 goals. So this is one team we have to look out for. And uh, secondly, the world champs have been uh, knocked out of the tournament by Switzerland. 4-5 victory in penalties. Honestly, we're not disappointed. We're pretty disappointed, but we're not surprised. Like Aditya mentioned yesterday, for Switzerland's dreams can come true and they've knocked out the world champions. But today, 9.30 IST in Wembley, Germany will take on England. It honestly doesn't get any bigger than this. Ye Southgate this is his date with destiny. How will he fare against this almost unstoppable German side? And um, let's let's talk a bit about history. Like, what's the significance of the encounter between these two teams? Let's go back almost 11 years in South Africa when Germany took on England in the round of 16. It um, just like just like what's happening in the Euro right now, a round of 16 game. Germany opens up the scoring with a fabulous goal by Miroslav Klose. Uh, then they get a second one, thanks to Lukas Podolski. Uh, then England managed to equalize. But if, we remember, if you guys remember the shot Frank Lampard took outside the D, which was a goal, but it wasn't given. That's the day goal line technology was born. So there's so much history linked to this game, and I just can't wait to uh, cover it. And uh, I hope you all are comfortable. You have your popcorn ready because we're going to discuss everything. 4 3 3. Will this formation work? What does Southgate need to do to beat the German midfield? We're going to discuss Tony Cruz, Kai Havertz, Rudiger versus Sterling, Kimmich versus uh, Rashford. So much to talk about. Anyway, without further ado, Aditya, my first question is for you. So we've seen, we've seen Germany ha have. We have seen Germans midfield be extremely dominant. Guy Havertz against Hungary. We saw him uh, play very well in the left side of the pitch and on the right side, creating opportunities from all directions for his team. And another midfielder, Tony Cruz, against Hungary, he had nine, uh, 123 touches, out of which 94 were successful passes. Four of them were impactful passes, and he had two attempts against goals. Mm. But Although the midfield was so dominant, humne, the scoreline didn't look as pretty. It was only 2-2. So, my question to you is, what do they need to do? Like, what, what, The striking is missing. So, what's the plan for Joachim to make sure that his midfield, his strikers are capitalizing from his midfield? Yes, this is a very uh, good question, first of all. So, I saw a couple of uh, videos on Sky Sports and... Uh, the first one is pertaining to Serge Nabri. Obviously, as you uh, pointed out, uh, Kai Havertz has uh, two goals and he is uh, Germany's, uh, I believe, leading goal scorer so far. And uh, we have uh, Nabri, uh, the speechster from, uh, I believe, Bayern. And he had said that, you know, although the game is in England's home ground, it's in Wembley Stadium. Wembley Stadium, the that stadium is very lucky for uh, Serge Nabri. And he says that, you know, whenever he's come back to that stadium, he scored. Uh, it's something about the stadium, something about the atmosphere and the energy in that stadium always drives him. And he uh, has most likely and most of the time scored when he's returned back to London. And uh, I also saw a video by uh, Germany's most capped player of all time, uh, Lothar Matthias, obviously a legendary midfielder, a World Cup holder. And he said that Germany's one of Germany's uh, key to success is uh, Thomas Muller. He may not have you know, the uh, skill of uh, Lionel Messi or, uh, you know, even Kai Havertz for Germany, but he gets into amazing attacking positions. He has amazing runs. And, uh, you know, when Matthias says that your movement is great and you have great, great attacking position, and he said that he is a key to Germany's success, not only for this English match, but for the remainder of the tournament, uh, if they go through. So, yeah, I think both of these players uh, would be pretty important, especially given the fact that Nabri is still yet to make his mark in uh, this tournament. 
Yes, yeah, Aditya, so great point. And uh, going back to Thomas Muller, he has 105 caps for Germany, out of which he scored 39. Lately, he's been playing more of a midfield role, but I think one big key to victory is that we need to see Thomas Muller back in his 2014 form, scoring the goals for Germany. Now, Priyam, if Gary Southgate calls you for one hour and asks you that this German 3-4-3 जो खेलते हैं इतना dominant है हर बार उनके पास ball है हम क्या करें इनको रोकने के लिए what would you tell him see uh, as far as Germany is concerned one thing that has been constant with the side has been uh, their defending being poor uh, in this year's Euro because we've seen that in the last three games they've almost conceded five to six goals so basically it's all about formations and it's all about breaking the lines of the German midfield. And how do you do it? Then you go with a 4-2-3-1 formation. Uh, in that case, uh, you have your defense tightened up and you have your attack tightened up as well. So, if you are playing a 4-2-3-1 against Germany, uh, you have uh, uh, Kyle Walker, John Stones, Harry Maguire and uh, uh, Shaw in the defense. And then you can have Declan Rice uh, uh, in the midfield as well. And then you have Phil Foden and uh, Jack Grealish as well. And uh, Raheem Sterling can also play as an attacking midfielder. So in that case, uh, what uh, what uh, Gareth Southgate might do is he might go with a 4-2-3-1 formation wherein uh, Jack Grealish and uh, uh, Jack Grealish and Raheem Sterling play as attacking midfielders, or Harry Kane plays the lone striker. And once he tries and do that, what will happen is Harry Kane will try and make that false number nine. Uh, runs in between the German defence. And when you do that, uh, the G German defence is quite uh, vulnerable. We've seen it against France, we've seen it against Portugal. Uh, they've been conceding a lot of goals and uh, see this, we have to uh, uh, agree to the fact that this German defence, defensive lineup does not look or does not, uh, is not at par with the uh, German defensive lineup that we've seen in the last five to six years. There used to be Jerome Boateng. And Manuel Neuer also used to be at his very best, but this year is already considered five goals. So, uh, if uh, the English team decides to sit back or park the bus, they'll definitely fail in this game. What they need to do is break the lines and that can only be done if they play two attacking midfielders in the front and uh, Harry Kane as the lone striker. If Raheem Sterling and Jack Grealish provide those balls to Harry Kane, Harry Kane will be very lethal. And I believe uh, Gareth Southgate might think about that perspective as well. Yes, I totally agree. Captain Kane, he's showed his heroics in the World Cup, taking the golden boot. And if he's playing up to his top form, it'll be hard for Neuer to stop his strikes. And uh, like you said about the German defence and the lines they have to fill, they always go with three in the back. 3-4-3 three, three seems to be their winning formula. And um, it's it won't be too hard to find the gaps. So, yeah, I completely agree with that, Priyam. Uh, so now, just talking about the formations, we've, we've seen Hungary start uh, against Germany with a 4-3-3 lineup. But when Cruz, Goretzka, and German ki midfield apni jalwa hai, no matter what formation you go with, they end up playing 4-5-1. Germany is known for just pushing teams back. They did it with Portugal, they did it with France. So, Addy, this game's in Wembley. When Germany is attacking like that and the crowd turns against England, What's the contingency contingency plan? Uh, so, Yadosh, I would uh, obviously answer that with the formation question only. Uh, so, uh, I had read this uh, uh, Evening Standard ka article, tha, obviously a UK-based uh, company, I believe. So, uh, unka ye manna hai ki Gareth Southgate ka uh, sabse bada dilemma hoga, or uh, one of the big dilemma hoga ki formation kaun si khele. He can either go with the uh, formation uh, usne, uh, uh, group stages mein apply kiya and uh, that was over 450 minutes of not conceding a goal. Or he can switch to a, a three defender formation uh, similar to the German Giants. But uh, while a three back uh, formation may control the wing backs of Germany, Southgate will lose out a midfielder in the process. So yes, it is a dilemma for them. and. Uh, as far as a contingency plan goes, um, I think uh, there'll be a lot of onus on um, uh, the the midfielders of England as well, because uh, uh, obviously I read this uh, one um, another article on Sky Sports, which uh, spoke a little about Declan Rice. 
obviously a young and promising midfielder in the Premier League, and uh, he had said that the Germany game will be the biggest of his career. Not because uh, you know it's such a it's in the Euros and, and it's such a big league, but because he has a massive amount of respect for Tony Cruz and Thomas Muller. And when you know such guys come, they come with a different energy. So uh, for some reason, I think that if he starts, he could be uh, very key uh, for England's uh, success. But him starting is a big if. Also, great uh, aim. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, but, uh, yeah. but I believe that. Uh, Today, uh, if if England have to neutralize Germany, there mm -hmm. are two key players that they have to neutralize at any cost. The first one being Tony Cruz. He's got a pass accuracy of almost 92 percent, and that's ridiculous because uh, the amount of passes and the amount of touches that he takes in a single game is unimaginable. And uh, uh, with the accuracy that he takes those passes, uh, it's quite exceptional uh, to say the least. Because we've seen Tony Cruz supply those long balls as well, and when you do that with such accuracy, you already are breaking the lines of the opposition defender. Mm -hmm. So what they need to do is neutralize Tony Cruz at priority, because I believe Tony Cruz is one of the most underrated legends of the game at the present moment. Uh, because he's not that flamboyant, he won't go out on social media and say very much. But what he does on the pitch is quite visible to everybody. And I believe that there is not much uh, talk about, talk in the town about uh, Tony Cruz. So, uh, if if uh, England look to neutralize Germany, they will have to neutralize Tony Cruz. The other threat being Matt Hummels. Uh, we, as I said yesterday, we try and talk less about defenders, but their role is also uh, very crucial in any team. And uh, Matt Hummels has got an exceptional pass accuracy of 97%. And so far, he's had five successful tackles in just three games. So that just goes on to show that if Matt Hummels has the majority of the possession while Germany is defending or while Germany was, is on the charge while maintaining a high line, uh, it can be lethal uh, for, uh, it can be deadly for the English side. So these two players, I believe that uh, uh, Gareth Southgate will have to plan accordingly uh, according to these two players because if they get the ball, you know that um, uh, more often than not, they'll complete those passes. And if they complete those passes, that gives Germany a chance to score. So yeah. that's about it for today. If Gareth Southgate has to neutralize Germany, they have to anyhow neutralize Tony Cruz and match up. Yes, Priyam. Very well said, Priyam. Especially about Tony Cruz. I'm of the opinion that if Southgate can stop Cruz, he can stop Germany because whether whether he likes it or not, Germany will have the ball. They will be attacking, and uh, Tony Cruz is usually the heart of that play. So if they are able to neutralize them, I think they can take the victory today. Mm -hmm. So um, now discussing, Aditya, you spoke about uh, young energies coming into this, and we saw Jokum make two wonderful subs against Hungary. The moment he put Goretzka and the young uh, Jamal from the FC Bayern academy, then they were able to convert a goal. And we mm -hmm. both know that both of these teams have a very dense lineup. So can you tell me, are there any super subs you would look out for today? Uh, so yeah, um, obviously, uh, Musiala would uh, be one uh, super sub to look out for, definitely. He uh, brought a really nice energy to the game uh, last time. And uh, in all likelihood, uh, due to uh, Gundogan, um, Gundogan sorry, getting a uh, yellow card in the previous game. Uh, another booking today would mean that he would be unable to play the next game if Germany qualifies. So we should be seeing Goretzka uh, playing and starting. But uh, one substitute that I'm uh, really looking forward to and I hope that he comes in and he makes a great impact is uh, uh, Timo Werner. He is uh, one of the only out and out strikers in the German side. Uh, obviously, a Chelsea man, uh, blistering, blistering pace, uh, uh, pretty good dribbling and uh, pretty good shooting as well. So, yes, uh, Timo Werner is one impact sub that personally, you know, I would like to see him uh, uh, bag a goal or two, uh, bag a goal at least and uh, make an impact, you know, be involved, uh, help the team. Well, very well said. Germany is missing that, is missing a star striker like Miroslav Klose and uh, who knows what if Werner is that man today. Uh, Priyam, any inputs for English, England substitutions? Uh, yes, I do believe that uh, Jaden Sancho can play a very crucial role for the English side. We've seen that he's, he's been exceptional with uh, Borussia Dortmund in the uh, uh, in the Bundesliga. And I believe that 
uh, Jaden Sancho could be the key for success to breaking those German lines because he knows how German football takes place. They are very, they maintain a very high line while defending, and uh, they also try and keep those three defenders, as you rightly mentioned. Uh, we've seen that over the years they've only kept three defenders in in the back, and they've attacked quite uh, high with a maintaining a very high line. So. Since Jaden Sancho has had that experience of playing along a lot of German players in the Bundesliga, I believe that he could be the key for England's success tonight. And if he is brought in the side, I believe that England have a very good chance of beating Germany as well. So, uh, although I am I am also supporting Germany in this tie, but uh, England cannot be neglected because we've seen that in the last three games they haven't conceded. This means that uh, their goalkeeper Jordan Pickford has also done really well. And I'm expecting a similar sort of performance tonight. But if they they have to score against uh, Germany, Jaden Sancho could be that super sub for me uh, for, from the English side. Hmm. Nothing like bringing someone who's familiar with the Germans on to beat the Germans. But anyway, I think the viewers at home, you need to realize the significance of this game. Like, this is not final, semi-final, quarter-final. But whoever wins this game, will play the winner of Sweden Ukraine a pretty easy fixture for both of these teams and now France nikal gaya euro se mm-hmm. what do you guys say on this adi uh, so uh, yeah to uh, some extent i agree although i wouldn't give a 90% chance uh, to the winning team this time i would uh, give them around a 40 50% chance because uh, the italians uh, the red devils and the spanish they're all looking pretty uh, matlab very lethal right now both the uh, uh, the way the form that they're showing Spain in the uh, group stage may struggle with the best goal in the match. And I'm going to try and divert a little bit before we move on to uh, Priyam. I'm very happy that uh, either Denmark or Czech Republic will make it to the top four in, the, in a major uh, European tournament. So that's something uh, that I'm looking forward to in the in a major European tournament. So that's something. Which will help, which is a great pride for either country. And I'm really glad that one of these teams will be a top four European nation this year. Wonderful. Czech Republic is a very well renowned footballing nation, winning World Cups when uh, the concept of the World Cup was just floated. So it'd be amazing to see them do well in this Euro. But uh, I think we've got. We've got all the stats, all the formation, everything out of the way for Germany versus England. Now it's time to reach the toughest part of the show. Predictions. Priyam, first blood predictions. England versus Germany. Uh, see, it's it will be a, uh, an attacking game from both ends, I believe. Uh, I go with uh, some sort of an unconventional choice today, but I believe that uh, Raheem Sterling could draw first blood tonight because uh, we've seen that uh, Although he's not been very clinical with his finishes over the years for Manchester City, but when he gets going, he gets going. There's, there isn't a better player in Manchester City when he's attacking the ball and when uh, he's in uh, such a run of form when he's finishing those uh, those uh, goals. So I believe that today uh, for the English team, I believe uh, um, Raheem Sterling could be that man. And uh, from the German side, I'm looking forward to Kai Havertz because. Uh, we've seen his exploits uh, in, the, in in this year's league competitions as well, and um, in the in that game against Portugal, uh, I believe he was he was uh, really uh, lethal with the ball. Uh, he was finishing well. He was uh, taking those dribbles to the forward line, and I believe that today either Kyle Havertz or uh, uh, Raheem Sterling could be that man. Good, great choices, but although the nature of this Euro is so random, most of the first bloods have been own goals and uh, I just pray that doesn't happen tonight because it would put either of these great teams at such a disadvantage. Uh, anyway, um, let's talk a bit about uh, Sweden versus Ukraine. Adi, I want to hear your inputs on this game. Okay, so uh, I mean, obviously, Due to the fact that uh, it's not a good encounter, or uh, England Germany, ka, this game is slightly being uh, you know, doesn't have that much attention. Uh, both uh, nations rocking a blue and yellow flag. Uh, and yeah, I thought I'll start by talking a little about uh, Sweden. Uh, Sweden uh, group toppers, the. 
uh, they opted for a 4-4-2 in their opening goalless draw versus Spain. Uh, they had a 4-4-2 against uh, Slovakia as well in a 1-0 victory, uh, courtesy to a 77-minute penalty by Fosberg. Uh, Sweden also triumphed 3-2 over uh, Poland, which saw the 4-4-2 again with the same lineup except for uh, Kweissen uh, was starting in place of uh, Berg and Forsberg had uh, slotted two goals uh, and that made Forsberg three goals in three games, a uh, real star for uh, the Swedish national team. This will also be the uh, Sweden's first knockout stage game since 2004. And the fact that the Swedes have played eight games and not been defeated in any one of them shows that, uh, you know, Jan Andersson's team is one to look out for. Uh, what they will be uh, really looking forward to are the heroics by Forsberg, uh, Alexander Isaac, who is the youngest player from Sweden ever to score an international goal. And obviously, Juventus uh, prospect uh, Kulusweski. And uh, all of these guys will uh, make the boss of Sweden, you know, uncover the challenge of missing uh, the legendary man uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. And uh, quickly, if I may touch upon the uh, Ukrainian side as well. They have uh, rallied with a 4-3-3 position in all three of their group stage games. And uh, it's pretty uh, funny, actually. They uh, A lot of uh, Ukrainian fans actually had a Ukraine and Sweden flag on their doorstep because it was courtesy to Sweden that Ukraine even qualified to the round of 16. Uh, they uh, have dropped a 4-3-3 in all three games. Uh, I think that... Um, I am personally backing Ukraine because uh, they're managed by a legend. Uh, they're managed by Shevchenko. And the last time uh, that uh, both of these teams faced off, uh, Ukraine actually won 2 1 against uh, Sweden. That time, Ibrahimovic scored the first goal in the Euro 2012 match. And Shevchenko then scored two goals. And that was their debut Euro triumph. I think that uh, Shevchenko will be lying on uh, Malin's. Malinowski and uh, Yamalenko, who has a lot of experience. Yamalenko has two goals and an assist in the tournament so far, and he has an overall tally of 42 goals and 21 assists, and is a current national record holder. So, yes, this is also a pretty good game, and uh, obviously, look forward to uh, seeing this one as well. I do too. This is also going to be a big clash. We can't rule out just because we're watching England Germany before. But anyway, I did tell that was those were some great points. And uh, Priyam, anything you want to add to Sweden versus Ukraine before we wrap up? Basically, Addy has summed it up. Um, all the key players, all the key points, he's mentioned it. Uh, I I personally believe that Sweden is going to win this game only because of the fact that of their uh, current run of form because. If we see, if we take a look at uh, their uh, run in the Euros this year, they've been uh, they've been in a pretty much better position than Ukraine. And if we take a look at their last six games as well, uh, their last six international fixtures as well, they've won five games and drawn a single game. So I believe that they are in a good run of form uh, at the moment. And today, I believe they'll have an upper hand uh, over Ukraine. But you never know. Uh, you never know. We see. We saw that. Czech Republic, uh, they threw out Netherlands and yesterday what happened was miraculous and that's why football is such a lovely game because it gives people hope uh, that if you have the might, if you have the caliber, you can turn the mightiest of mountains and that's what we've been seeing in this year's Euro and tonight it might take place once again. So, uh, fingers crossed, but I believe that Sweden uh, are the favourites going into this game. Hmm. Very well said, Priyam. And um, on that note, uh, we conclude today's show. Uh, we'll be back uh, once the round of 16 is over to cover the semi-finals, quarter-finals, and, as well as the finals. Thank you guys for your continued support, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, sir.